episode five of Geography Explained Online. Today we're going to be looking at a very fundamental skill that you have to understand well to do any type of graphic map stuff at all, which is contour lines. We're going to look at how they're used and what they're used for. Alright, so let's get to the whiteboard. Alright guys, so what are contour lines used for? Essentially it's just a way to show a three-dimensional surface on a two-dimensional map. All we do is we join up lines of equal height uh, together and from a bird's eye view they make concentric circles to use to show elevation. Okay, so behind me we can see we've got a mountain. Obviously this is a side-on view. So how would we show this three-dimensional shape, side-on view, how do we show it on a contour map? Well, it would look exactly like this. So now we have our, so our top view. We have these concentric circles, the top of the mountain is right in the middle, and as we go down the mountain, we go to the outside. So what we can see on this contour map here is that this side here where our contour lines are really close together was the steep side of our slope. This side here where our contour lines are much more spread out is a much more gradual slope. So to go back a few videos, this side here would have a much um, shallower gradient than this side here which would have a very steep, almost one-to-one -one gradient. Okay. So we've got two examples here of a side-on view of a mountain and the contour line view of that same mountain. I've done my dots here to line up the areas of equal height. And as you can see here, we've got a nice evenly shaped mountain. And with contour lines, obviously bird's eye view, each of these contour lines represents those areas of equal height. So you might have them with a contour interval of say 50 meters. So 100 meters, 150, 200 sort of thing. Down the bottom here, I've got another example. I've got a mountain with two peaks. You can see I've got two lines here of equal elevation. They're these two big contour lines around the outside. But because we've got two peaks of different heights, we've got one line there that's sort of broken up by the dip in the slope. That is the two bigger circles here. And I've got one more peak across the top. So again, bird's eye view, a mountain like this would look like that with an extra contour line there. Okay, what we're gonna show you now is how to actually find the height of a place when we're looking at a contour map. This is a really common question that you'll get in the HSC and all of your geography tests. So the first thing we need to do when we look at a contour map like this is to work out the contour interval. And all that is contour interval is the difference between each contour line. And it's always going to be the same amount. So it's always going to go up each contour line by the same number of metres. You can see there's numbers on every second line and they're going up by 20. Sometimes people confuse that to think the contour index, sorry, the contour interval is actually 20, but it isn't. Very important to remember the contour interval, as Ms. Coburn said, is the difference between every line. So even though every second line is numbered, every line it has to be taken into account with the contour interval. So every line there is 10 because each line goes up by 10. So as you can see from this example here, we've got 150 metres above sea level, clearly marked. Next one's not marked, but it goes up by 10, so 160, 170, 180, so on. So what we're going to do first is find this point A. And what we need to do simply is follow the line around. Every point along this line is going to be the same height in metres above sea level. So if we follow A around to where our, our numbers are clearly marked, you can see it's between 170 and 190, and we know it's going up by 10 metres each time. So this line here in between is going to be 180 metres. And when we write that, we always want to make sure we include the units. It's 180 metres high. And these maps are always, always going to be in metres. You're not going to have one in kilometres, you're not going to have one in centimetres, also you're not going to, have to use any other type of measurement. Because 180 metres, sorry, 180 kilometres above sea level, very big mountain, doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty straightforward. It's on a contour line, it's easy to do. But what about our point B here? What do we do with that? We can see clearly that it's between the 150 and the 160 metre line, but that doesn't mean, and that's about halfway in the middle, it doesn't mean that it's 155. The only way to answer this is a range. It's between the 150 and the 160 line, so all we can say is that B, point B, is between 150 and 160. You can also write, that it is greater than 150 or less than 160. We actually don't have any other information other than it's between those two points, so we cannot be more specific than that. 
Thanks guys for watching episode 5 of Geography Explained Online. Join us next week for episode 6 where we're going to look at how to calculate time, distance and speed on top of Google Maps. Also you may have seen that we have an intro and outro music bit which is awesome. Big thanks to Ryan Hemsworth for that, much appreciated. Uh, please follow him on, at Ryan Hemsworth Music on YouTube. Uh, we'll make a link to his Instagram and all that sort of stuff in the, in the, um, in the credits. Credits. Yes, yeah, so watch the credits and you'll be able to see how to follow Ryan Hemsworth. You'll also find uh, a link to our new Instagram. So if you need more geography on your Instagram, uh, check out Geography Explained Online. And please join us next week. Hashtag Sausage Sunday. Okay, so I'm telling you, look like a cowboy. I don't know why I just look like a cowboy. Right, that's weak, double guns. Do the double guns. See you guys next week. Thanks. Come on. Oh, the bell. <laughs> Joker, explain.